I'm such an idiot. Of course you're not talking to me. I mean, I'm asking you. <laughs> I can't believe I just answered that. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're all no, going to school. that part out. Uh, hi, welcome. This is podcast, and we are here with guest. Hello, it is Wiener Hello. Nova once again. This time, though, we have a have a Caleb and and a and a Chris, and they are here to talk, and they have been talking. Hey. What's up? Podcast. Um, I guess to get started out here, how do y'all know each other? Uh, what's what's the lore here? You um. So we we met in elementary school. We've known each other for well, I think we met in first grade or second grade. It's got to be something like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. First, second yeah. Grade, but it's funny. We hated each other at first. We we hated each other. <laughs> I, I, at least I hated him. <laughs> huh? Just now news. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> yeah. Fine, and we're but, all finding out now. But then I was like, oh, he's cool. <laughs> Well, Wait, by the by the time college happened, yeah. <laughs> by the time we yeah. graduated high school, it's like, yeah, I guess he's cool. Yeah, we just had to white knuckle it for most of our lives. White knuckle <laughs> it. All right, give me more on that. What the fuck does that mean? Yeah, well, Chris, you can elaborate on that. <laughs> we uh, may have harassed Caleb in high school. Oh my lord! I oh, see. Don't get me started. Yeah. Okay. I laugh at it now, but back then I like could not take a joke for the life of me. I got we offended by everything, and this is like this is like freshman year of high school, I guess, when they were like, they they made like all these like jokes, and I'm like, it, it, anno- it annoyed the shit out of me. But when I look back at it now, I'm like, we were freshmen in high school. I mean, of course we were gonna be dicks to each other. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, he he had these hilarious typos that were like extremely oh, yes. consistent. Every time was, he needed to type tomorrow, it would end up being spelled too marrow. Too marrow. Too marrow. Yeah, too it, narrow. It's like you. It's like your fingers spoke in an accent. <laughs> but like honestly, like it, it's always like the little things that always kind of built up misspellings. Like there was one time where I brought a, a lunchable to to lunch in freshman year of high school because I like had nothing to bring for lunch, so I was like, "Screw it, I'll just bring a lunchable." Sure, why not? And, and they railed on me Those for that. <laughs> I mean, it it was high school. <laughs> it was high school. Yeah, when I look back at it now, I'm like, why the hell did I bring a lunchable in high school? But <laughs> yeah, because I mean, to be fair, lunchables may be great. I don't know if that's gonna fill a high schooler up all that well. No. <laughs> yeah. Those uh, tiny little pizzas. Those tiny, those tiny <laughs> yes, little little. That's cold, what it was. Yeah, but yeah. it was the pizzas. Those cold little slivers of turkey or ham meat with a with a crusty block yeah. of cheese, oh, <laughs> all mixed together the, uh, with a Ritz cracker, delicious. We're waiting for the Lunchables filet mignon edition. <laughs> for the the, lun- <laughs> the Lunchables le creme de creme. <laughs> and a little creme brulee pocket. Creme brulee. Oh, yeah. I am holding out until we get ourselves a beef Wellington Lunchable. That's oh, it. Oh, oh, can we, can we get sponsored by Lunchables? <laughs> um, only if they make a beef Wellington. But yeah, it was always like the little things that I would do that was like the easiest source material for them to use to just rail on me and just make me like a punching bag of jokes. <laughs> Okay, to be fair, you did deserve one of them. I did. You? I did deserve a few. I will say that now. I did deserve quite a few. Hey, I mean, we I... probably all did when we were younger. Hormones are stupid, man. Oh my god, they... Yeah. Chris, you want to elaborate on some of them? <laughs> okay, so this guy would not let this go. He asked somebody out, and they oh said yes. Oh my god, So yes. pretty much every time we like would walk up to him, it would just be... Hey everybody, guess who's got a date with a girl? This guy. (laughs) This guy. Giant fucking uh, lights with arrows start pinging down. Yeah. Honestly. (laughs) No, not to be fair. Again, I was a freshman in high school and I never dated anybody like until then. I was like, oh shit, it's my time. I gotta tell the world about this. (laughs) And you beat out somebody else in our friend group for that same girl, if I remember correctly. Damn, that's Travis! Swooping in. All right. Yes, I... The thing is, though, I I didn't know until I went on the date because... And I won't say the name (coughs) of who the guy was. (laughs) Uh, I mean, if you Uh, say it, I can just redact it. It's fine. I have that technology. It's true. 
Um, I don't know if y'all know who Jack! is. We've heard some about him, but never actually talked to him. Yeah, but would you say I... that this has made the Pumpkin King bitter against you for life? Oh, yes. No. <laughs> oh, yes. He's engaged now. Well, so he's I... engaged oh. now. Oh, I know, but that's still like... He's engaged I mean... now, but he hated me throughout the entirety of high school for it. And the thing is, I didn't even know he liked me. He until liked one... you? <laughs> oh, like, you know, wait, I, I think I'm misunderstanding the relationship here. <laughs> no, what I meant to say, I didn't mean that. I didn't know that he liked this girl. I didn't know that he liked this girl until one day, you know, I'm walking in the hall and he just goes to me and goes, So, I heard you went on a date. And I was like, Yeah. And he's like, Well, I like that girl you went on a date with. I'm like, Okay. And then he just told me to fuck off. Wow. Seems like a nice, uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's high school for you. Yeah, yeah, again, but again, I didn't know that he liked the girl. And again, like, of course, like, you know, me being a freshman in high school, I was just bragging like, hey, I got a date. And I deserved 100% to get bullied and railed on by the group because they did not care. <laughs> so you two have known each other for a really long time. How long? How, how do you guys know the rest of the group then? Pretty much so, the exact same way. Pretty right. much. So the, the group actually started with me and Harrison because we met each other in soccer we we played okay. soccer and then you know we ended up going to the same elementary school and, you know we were friends got the entirety of elementary through high school and pretty much as you know as we grew our friendship we brought people along in our group as well like we brought Chris we brought Jake we pretty much brought everybody that y'all know okay and you guys got Mark from Minecraft yeah, I don't so know Harrison how we got Mark. Know. That was Harrison. Harrison, Harrison told me that Harrison. he got Mark from Minecraft. That sounds from, about right. From an that makes, from that's Minecraft about where we find Mark, yeah. That makes sense. He was living there for weeks. Yeah, he he just dust, dusted him off, picked him up, carried him over. <laughs> this is <Yeah>. Mark. <laughs> Mark's been stuck in the Matrix for years. Is St. Louis the Matrix? Probably at this point. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so I'm sure y'all know it's spooky month. And that's a thing that we've definitely been doing for more than just a single episode. But it's October. Yeah, it's it's spooky time. I mean, that's that's really my only thought on that. And roll credits. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's the time for spooks and, and scares and screams. And... Okay, I actually have a poll I'd like to put yeah. forth for the panel here. Is the movie, The Nightmare Before Christmas, considered a Halloween movie or a Christmas movie? It is absolutely 100% considered both a Halloween and a Christmas movie. You are to watch it October, November, and December. Three times a year in that span. November, November isn't Christmas or Halloween. <laughs> yeah, but it's, but it's the in-between month where there's yeah, no Yeah, but like, what does holidays. it matter? And because if you it's... say Thanksgiving, you're absolutely wrong. <laughs> you're just factually incorrect. I'm sorry, sir. I see. Yeah, I kind of feel like it really comes in clutch right uh the the beginning of October, so I prefer it as a as a Halloween thing. But mm -hmm. that's just cuz I feel like there's so many other Christmas holiday movies. Granted, I don't want to watch any of them, but they exist. Yeah, so, I agree with you there. Like I'd rather watch, you know, Elf for on Christmas than watch Nightmare Before Christmas. Oh, dude. No. Elf. Fuck. number one i've number seen that one. movie so many times the, i wow the first time i watched that movie this is a wild story i just i'm recollecting this old memory i it was one time when i was hanging out with my cut co my cousin a long ass time ago and he showed me a really like one of those really really old website jump scare things and it was i don't know it was some like creepy like, sc thing. like scary car or something like that well it was like a website and when you scrolled to the bottom after reading all of it it like popped out at you i don't know either way it scared the shit out of me and my cousin felt bad so he we watched the elf and uh i laughed my ass off and elf how old were you <laughs> uh <laughs> Joke answer seventeen. Real answer probably like twelve. Whenever when did it come out? Actually, I'm you gonna look this up. You right twelve? I saw it when I was like four or five. Yeah. Dude, okay. Wait. How the old was this movie? movie? Hold up. I'm looking. Like it was at least two thousand and three. Yeah. Two thousand four. 
Yep. Nope. That yeah. that's no, actually no. Nope. This is Elf Cosmetics. Mm. This is a company. My bad. Oh. Yep. Well, Elf, <laughs> came, Elf came out on. Wait, Elf came out in October. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Elf came out October 9th. Okay. So now here's the real question. Is Elf a Christmas or Halloween movie? <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh no! Because according guess. to the filmmakers, it's it's a Halloween movie. It's a Halloween movie. <laughs> Better be watching I mean, this shit next to your Fridays or your Jasons. Your your Elf, he's here to strangle you because he doesn't know how, <laughs> how the, strong the he is. The directors intentionally made it to be a horror movie, but people are like, oh, it's a Christmas movie. He's gonna chug a two liter of Coke so hard that the belch will break your eardrums and then you'll That's die right <laughs> but have you actually tried the uh chocolate syrup and marshmallows in the spaghetti noodles that he liked to make in the movie you know no because <laughs> it's delicious it's, well, it's just black it's okay slap. It's delicious. okay what what is the recipe again if you could if you could please recite and no no cheating you know this off memory don't you oh gosh okay let's see it is the spaghetti pasta noodles syrup Chocolate syrup, pop tarts, marshmallows, and I think M and M's. So wait, <laughs> d- d- does he do a does he do a marinara, a, a spaghetti sauce, or is it specifically sweet? I is, think it's specifically sweet. It would be nasty know, if you put the marinara. Yeah, on. that's what's been kind of drawing me away <laughs> from yeah, this no. situation. <laughs> You do it without the marinara. The syrup and the noodles are actually really tasty together. So you know, it actually goes really well. I tr- I would make that. I would make that whole thing, and I would eat one bite, and I'd be satisfied. <laughs> but I bet you it would be a good bite. <laughs> Chris, you got every ingredient correct, but you are missing one. Oh shit! Oh, what was I missing? Rainbow sprinkles. Oh yes. Rainbows, okay. of course. Oh yeah, he makes a big deal out of that, doesn't he? Let's see I it. think one serving of spaghetti, red and green M and M's, many marshmallows, rainbow sprinkles, chocolate syrup, maple syrup, and one chocolate fudge pop tart. One chocolate fudge. <laughs> the pop tart's fudge. really the icing on the cake. No, then you need to get one of those fucking those uh, toaster strudels. That's actual icing for the cake. <laughs> That's true. Oh my god. This sounds like a heart attack. How many things can we cram into? It probably was already a heart attack. Yeah, I probably right. shaved like five years off my life hey, I feel <laughs> per that. bowl I ate. I feel that. So, um, do you guys want to go into... Gosh, uh, I did not have topics prepared. Well, <laughs> well, oh, trust me. Well, we, we didn't ask you to have any prepared. It's okay. And you act like we prepare anything. <laughs> well, because it is, uh, it is spooky month, we could ask like what are our favorite like horror movies or video games. You could do either or. I mean, I'm probably going to pick a movie because I already know what my favorite horror movie is. So Okay. What about you, Chris? I actually used to be, like, deathly afraid of horror movies. E- oh, hey, movie. same. So I did not oh actually start watching them until a couple of years ago. That- I just avoided, blocked them all out, and then my cousin forced me to see it or something like that no like, it was me who forced you to see you. it <laughs> okay it was- i am about to say but it's, i was about to tell the story how i went over to your house and i brought everybody over and we forced you to watch it chapter one and you were horrified by it <laughs> i was horrified but at the end i was like damn that was a good story though <laughs> so i oh, kept yeah. watching them yeah i haven't seen it it's pretty good it- really that it's great it <laughs> chapter is two is not that good though unfortunately <gasps> I know. Oh, dare you? <laughs> I didn't think it was as good as the first one, but I thought it was still pretty good. It was decent. I mean, it's not horrible, but it's decent. Well, it has Bill Hader in it, so I'm biased to like it, I suppose. <laughs> yep, you got me there. <laughs> hey, Bill Hader's pretty, pretty rocking. He's pretty tight. I'm, I'm yeah, down. God, with, I'm he's down, down with the Hader. <laughs> he's so funny. You want to know the first like movie I think I saw him in though? Oh, what was it? It was, I believe, the movie called Trainwreck, starring um, Amy Schumer. Amy Schumer, yes. Uh, she was the main character, and he was the love interest. And I think also John Cena at one point was a love interest too. And he told, he yelled at a dude in a theater that he will fuck his ass. So oh, some there's that. Yeah, it was. Oh what no, wait. So John Cena was fun? getting really scared by a horror film. Hey, there we go. 
and but like and he was being really loud and the other dude was being like hey there are other people here and he's like shut up you're being loud whenever he's just telling it it's oh it was God. stupid anyway he they had intercourse <laughs> i see just right you there know, in the grimy theater yeah popcorn butter lube who who did that's actually a good that does happen in a movie where somebody uses popcorn butter as lube for a hand job and i'm like uh, i feel like that would uh sting, infection. sting your pee pee i are <laughs> gonna get a yeast alone? infection <laughs> all on that yikes i ew <laughs> What a mess. And it's butter, so it would take forever to clean off. Oh, that. God. Oh, God. Don't. Oh, no. No. Don't do that. Eh. Hey, moral of this episode, don't do that. <laughs> don't, don't use butter for If there's any doctors listening, please tell us how, there, how that would go down. You know what's spooky about this episode? That. That, yeah. Think about it. <laughs> but, oh, uh, Lord. so, Chrissy, would you say that Id Chapter 1 is your favorite horror movie? Because that's, like, the one that I that you really like that i know of gosh it's either that or i'm leaning towards us because that was really good that's oh, probably the scariest movie that I've ever was really seen, good so i would call that good. more of like a general thriller though i wouldn't really say that as much as like yeah. a halloween movie but at the same oh, time yeah. really okay, yeah, good it's not a halloween i just lump anything that's remotely scary into the same category oh i so. feel that <laughs> mm-hmm. like that's not a horror that's a thriller psycho terror like psychological horror like, oh like, i trust, don't even know how to differ- trust differentiate. me i completely agree because i am also the pussy of the two of us oh okay my favorite horror movie ever is a movie that came out two years ago it's a movie called hereditary oh no oh god this movie oh, god. fucked me up <laughs> Like, so I went in there opening night. I love the film company. It's A24. I love them. They're like the coolest film company out there. And I saw opening night and I like, shit you not, I could not sleep for a week after seeing this movie. It messed me up, but it's so good. Oh, I bet. It's so good. <laughs> I think that's why I have seen so few horror films, especially ones like that one, which I have heard so much about. I just... Mm. I get home, I think I'm fine, like I'm over it, and then I get home, and then I'm like trying to go to bed, and I'm like, oh god, it's dark. Hey, you know what else is dark? Everything. Everything. When you close your eyes, it's dark. Keep them open. When you close your eyes, you can see the nightmares. (laughs) That makes me think of a horror movie that I saw where the bad guy was the fucking tooth fairy, my dude. What? And it was literally like, (laughs) but here's the thing. Here's the thing. The Tooth Fairy Can Only Get You in the Dark. Was it Dwayne The Rock Johnson? Yeah, that's what I was just about to say. No, No, wait, it was Larry the Cable Guy. (laughs) He also did that. (laughs) It was some freaky, like, glass-skinned looking lady. Weird. But yeah, I just remember it was really fucking weird. Yeah, I th- I actually think I have seen that one of all of them. It was it was either like Alone or Afraid of the Dark. Alone in or Afraid of. One of those two. And Chris, I will get you to watch Hereditary one time. Mark my words, you are going to watch that movie with me. I'm sorry, oh, brother. No. Ooh, On my deathbed, I'll watch it. Ooh, you know what you guys should watch, though, is Creep. Creep. Oh, Creep is such a good movie. Just, like, I wouldn't even necessarily categorize it as horror. It's more of, like, a psychological thriller in a found footage style. Which, normally, found footage style, not my thing. Yeah, I know. But, uh, this one is really well done. Because it's really just two guys the whole time. Yep, just two dudes. Just hanging out. Just two dudes. Just two dudes. Two dudes in a bad mood. The only found footage movie that I kind of do like is, um... I think it was Sinister, the first one, because that one was kind of oh. found footage. Ugh, which one was that? Is that the one with the boogeyman? Is that, is that no, the one I, that's got the photo of the creepy dude in it? No, I don't think so. It's been a while since I've seen it, but it's like where like a family moves into like an old home and there's like <laughs> film tapes like in the attic and the dude like plays the tapes and they're like cursed or something like that. Yes, and then there's it's oh, wait no yeah it's footage of other people being killed at that house previously. If I'm yeah, not yeah, mistaken. yeah yeah uh yeah I've seen that movie. That's one of the only other movies, one of the only horror movies I actually saw as a kid, and I wanted to die after seeing it. I did not sleep for three days. 
Because every like time God. I... Dude, well, it's like I, I, every time I would close my eyes, I would just see the little face that like pops up in the corner of the, of the camera and the little picture screen. And I don't yeah. know. It just it burned itself into my into my little into my little teenager brain. Because that's how I was with uh, Hereditary. I was like, oh, nothing scares me. I'll be fine. After that movie, nope, I'm not okay. <laughs> I'm not okay. <laughs> Wait. Thinking about Did you it, see it like five times, Caleb. I saw it five times in the theater, dude. Like it <sighs> was, it is like my, it's my, to, it's my top three favorite movies ever. Like of how well it's made. That's how it's, I feel about the Conjuring movies. Both one and two could be in my top, like my top ten. You know what I actually really enjoy watching? What I've loved seeing seeing in the theaters are the Insidious movies because those ones are actually movies that I'm not scared of. And I can make fun of them while I watch them oh, because yeah. they're not, not good. great. <laughs> <laughs> See, uh, now I'm I'm sitting here wondering who's who's the fucking person that that's crawling a, crawling in to see Paranormal five point three one. Why did they yeah, make so many of those? Many of those? There? There's like seven, aren't there? I remember growing up and seeing uh, trailers for like activity, every year. I want to say there's seven or eight of them. They did not get Jeez. better ever, and they weren't that great to begin with, and I would fight anyone on that. Do it. Yeah, I, I only saw the third one in theaters because me and my friend wanted to sneak in and watch it, and it was pretty bad. Paranormal Activity listed to get its new release date of, 20, of 2022. Guess what, oh, guys? Yes. It's not over yet. There are more ghosts. That's what it's about, right, ghosts? Something like that. It's Ghostbusters. Oh, okay. So it's one, two, three, four, the marked ones, and then the ghost dimension. All right. You know, better than just numbering systems, I will say. I'll give you that. Mm. But now I gotta... All right. What's going on, Mr. The Ghost Dimensions? What do we have here? as late as 2015 i can't believe we had a one that came out that recent oh god wow yeah 2015 i hate that well because from what i heard is that like this one was like so bad that they just completely stopped making them i guess until now only grossed (sighs) 18.3 in north america and it got 60.6 in other territories and a worldwide total of 78. But the budget was 10 million, meaning they only made 8.3 million on the like American release. That's a big that's, goofy. That's yeah. a big garbage. Like you didn't even double what you put into it. Um and, and for blockbuster oh. movies, that's just I mean, I I would say even the like the most recent Saw movie did better than that. And that one was like just to put in perspective, a bad one. like domestic, the very first one grossed over a hundred million dollars. The oh very first God. one. Okay, so this movie opened alongside the last witch hunter, Rock the the Caspar, <laughs> and Jim Jim and the hologram. Jim and the hologram. What the hell? Which one of these should I click on? Gem and the Holograms. Gem and the Holograms, dude. But that like, looks scary. What, 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 because Gem and the Holograms was like a live-action remake of but, an 80s cartoon. But, counterpoint, hmm. The, the Last Witch Hunter has what? has Vin Diesel in it. Oh, oh, wow. oh he's <laughs> yes. the lead character, man. <laughs> is, it about, is it about a family of witch hunters? It, the film stars Vin Diesel as an immortal witch hunter who must stop the plague from ravaging the entire world, grossing one a hundred and forty-seven million. Uh, is that more than the other than Paranormal Activity? Oh. More importantly, though, apparently Elijah Wood was also in this flick. Where were oh you, God. Elijah? Huh. <laughs> <laughs> How was it not amazing? Which hunt- the Witch Queen unleashed the Black Plague to wipe out humanity. A band of knights, including the widowed... Okay. Okay, yep. Eternal Life. Teenage Witch. The 36 Dolan tells Calder that he is retiring from his duties and has chosen a new Dolan for him. Okay. Vin Diesel, I'm sorry. We gotta see what's up with Jim. So, what? So, you know this one, Aubrey? Um, I am familiar with, like, the old school version of what it's based on, and I know this movie didn't do as well as they thought it would. Oh. Um, yeah, wow. 
I have Haley Kiyoko in it. She's a gay music icon right now. Yikes, this one only made two million worldwide. See what I tell ya. Yikes. Crap. That is Vin Diesel, man. Rough. Apparently, apparently, <laughs> apparently you need Vin. Vin Diesel just killed he everyone. He didn't enough for the Fast and Furious audience. I guess they just you're need right. To replace, they need to replace Jim with Vin Diesel. Vin Diesel and the holograms. The key to making money in Hollywood, attracting a large percentage of the Fast and the Furious crowd. That's the key right there. We learned it. We found it All out, right. guys. Aubrey, you ready? You ready to be a billionaire in Hollywood? We need to kidnap uh, Vin Diesel. Freaking Lutely. We need to kidnap I mean, Vin I'm Diesel. Down. Um, I've seen the pacifier a lot of times. Okay. I could take him. Okay. Wait, so like, as in, like, you, you've seen his moves, so you know how to counter them, or do you just think he's bad? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. No, 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 no. I don't think he's bad. Not at all. No. Have you seen the pacifier? <laughs> yeah. In fact, his moves are so good in the pacifier that I don't need to see any of his other movies because they do not add up. They do not equivocate. I could practice with just the pacifier alone, especially the part where he fights the goose. Does he fight a goose? Aubrey, is there a goose in the pacifier? Uh, yes. I think it's like the house pet. Okay, but does he fight it? Uh, no. Maybe? I don't know! God now I'm... I think he might, but, like, just to, like, tame it, and then they become, like, chill. Pacifier, does he fight the goose? <laughs> it only got 21%. <laughs> Oop, wait, pacifier? Yeah. <laughs> Sounds about right. Oof. Alright, control F. Goose. Nothing here. Bird. Nope. It's a duck. But the, do they fight? Shane distracts Mr. Chun with help of Mr. Plummer's family pet duck, Gary. And Claire Gary. knocks him unconscious. And they kidnap him. Hey, I mean, yo. I mean, they got 200 what? mil in the box office. Yeah, okay. This has got Ben Diesel's best moves in it, for sure. It's fine. It doesn't say on this wiki page because it just wants to hide it. We know he fights the duck. <laughs> Um, he is here. the duck. No need to go see the movie. Is that Vin Diesel with Elmo? Oh my lord. Uh, it sure is Vin Diesel with Elmo. I'm very quickly realizing that that's not Vin Diesel. Bleeding <laughs> 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 thumbnail. No, no, no. I think because you you looked up the pacifier, it brought up an Elmo pacifier. <laughs> Yeah, I think if you saw a bald man, we assumed it was Vin Diesel. Um, you know what? Now I feel like the asshole. Jeez. I need some tea. Hey, it's your friendly neighborhood ad here. Just having some tea. Not really a whole lot to report this time. Other than, I guess, please use our email for all your favorite autumn time pastimes and suggestions or stories. Please do, so we can do that. That's W A W T A mail six nine at Gmail. Hit us up. Do you guys like tea? Do you like any uh, hot beverages? Speaking of fall season, it's coffee. 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 <laughs> Hell yeah. Oh, hey, yo. Uh, pumpkin, pumpkin spice. Oh, oh pumpkin wait. Pumpkin spice is so good. It's, uh, I enjoy it. Aubrey spent a good chunk of the last episode ranting about it. Oh, <laughs> I guess not a fan, huh? Listen, I think that it is a good flavor, but I think we came to the consensus that it was just kind of like, just kind of seemed like one of those like seasonal flavors that everyone got like way more hooked on than it was ever anticipated. Oh, for sure. It's a, um, a total trend. But, but Do hey, you watch uh, John Oliver by chance? John Oliver sounds familiar. Is he a late night dude TV show yeah. guy? Mm -hmm. Yep. I have seen... A couple clips from him, but not all that much. This particular segment had to do with pumpkin spice coming early because of COVID. And it's them, they show a bunch of news clips of just anchors reacting to it. After each clip, it's a demonic voice that comments on it. So the anchor will say something like, you know, pumpkin spice is coming a month early, but you know what? I say just let him have it. And then the demonic voice cuts in like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let us have it. Delicious. Up ever. Pumpkin, I mean, pumpkin spice is very good. And cinnamon. It's very good. It is. I mean, it's cinnamon, right? It's, it's not cinnamon. bad. 
I don't think I've ever had like a bad pumpkin spice latte. Of course not. It doesn't even taste like pumpkin though. What's it supposed to taste like? A candle Sugar. or something? Cin- or cinnamon? Something? Cinnamon something. <laughs> it smells like fall. <laughs> yeah. So it tastes <laughs> the like fall. drink is a vibe. It is a fall vibe. It's, yeah, fall vibe. I've always been a big coffee person. I had, I I've been drinking coffee since I was like 18. That's it's a bad thing. I have a caffeine problem. But I got to say, uh I've gotten into into teas and like loose leaf teas this last year and it has been it's been real nice. It's a, it's been especially nice for making sure my my throat stays uh nice and uh cleared out, you know, for all the intense amount of talking that i have to do on a daily basis <laughs> well have yeah, to clip. have to quotation marks <laughs> it's the one staple of normalcy we have yeah yeah i think fall is my favorite holiday just or like favorite like season like area just like you know i didn't know you were an instagram white girl caleb yeah bro same <laughs> i mean here. i too like fall but for like spooky witch reasons it's, it's, it's an excuse to wear long sleeve clothing <laughs> and oh, an excuse yeah. to tweet about how fall represents a new beginning. I um exactly. okay. No, that's a that's a January. I guess the fall is the is the mid season resolutions, huh? New year, <laughs> new me. New, new, season, new new weather, new clothes. <laughs> that's right. I'm gonna be the same shit ass I've always been. But now I'm stylish. <laughs> that's how I feel every fall. Yeah, I have more outfits for the fall and winter than I do the summer, so naturally, <laughs> I um, just feel more at home in the colder months. Yeah, I can't relate. No, I don't. Not at all. I can't relate. Not at all. Not at all. Okay. So, how many pairs of shorts do you have? No, I have, oh. I probably have spent more money on jackets than oh, yeah. any other article of clothing in my oh, that's what's closet. Up. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> as one does. Dude, listen. As a kid, I just. I don't know why, but I just never felt like I had a full outfit. Like I was really like secure unless I had like a jacket or something. So I just enjoy, I just always uh, wore jackets whenever it was way too warm for them. And, you know, that tends to cause you to enjoy the colder seasons more, I guess. Oh, of course. So do you yeah. have like those like uh, jacket vest things? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I had I had like a really old North Face jacket that I wore a long ass time ago forever, mm. and it was really shitty and ratty. But I no, I've had I've had many. I uh, was quite the leather daddy for a while, if I must say. Oh yeah. Uh, I had I have like four different leather jackets. I don't really wear them much anymore. I wear them when it gets cold outside. I I don't wear them mm. all that much. <laughs> Butterfly greaser. <laughs> I kind I don't slick my hair back. I'm more I, it's it's more up, and it's it, I use a pomade. I don't grease it. And you got a switch blade in the pocket. Really, do, I do not own a knife, and I really don't care about cars. So I can dance. I'll be one of those greasers. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> be be one of the. I could be a grease lightning. I could I could. I mean, they all look like they're grease faking lightning. how to be mechanics. I could do that. That is true. <laughs> I mean, and then you just be- sing a sing a uh, show tune, and the car gets fixed. Well, yes, that's the point. That's the reason that they ban magic in the tiny, tiny town of Greece. It's because, <laughs> it, well, sorry, why they ban singing is it's because of its magic. I'm getting ahead of myself here. That's that's the hidden lore that they don't want to tell you. Hey, editing Mason here. Wrong movie, but I'll let you have it, bud. Yeah. It's, it's of like course. it's. It's a conspiracy. They don't want you. They're not about it. It's a witch. Hu- it's literally a witch hut for dancing. <laughs> <laughs> it is. If oh my he gosh, while sees... we're on the topic of Greece, one sec, real fast. <laughs> I just have to point out if you, I don't know if you've seen the parodies people make of the Summer Lovin' music video, where one of the lyrics is, Did she put up a fight? And then everybody's like, Why, are, why do people have to put up a fight? Yeah, that's. <laughs> to hmm. sleep with you. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, it's that's funny. not so the only jokes. It's so funny. That's not the only problematic line in that song, but yeah, that one is did, did quite particularly a weird one. I mean, yeah, quite literally. Did she put up? I, did she put up a fight? As in, is she into your weird boxing kink? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I mean, all the other stuff is just symbolically problematic. But was that she? One was hey, so was she like fuck me, or was she like? 
if you don't deck me in the face right now, I'm leaving. <laughs> yeah. With this boxing glove. Don't worry, I have a mouth guard. And this it's consensual. Nice. But my mouth guard is pink. That's just an important detail. <laughs> Unrelated otherwise. Of course, of course. <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, I mean, thinking about it, a very unnecessary reoccurring spell in, in Dungeons & Dragons is uh, the spell Grease. So, case closed. Checkmate, Atheist. <laughs> <laughs> Explain this. <laughs> Explain this magic. The Gathering. Do you guys oh, play that? I do not. Yeah, me neither. I love, I love board games, but I don't play D&D. <laughs> Caleb See, would never stoop to that level. I've done both I of used to play things. it, though. I used to play it. I've played D&D since, like, junior high, but it's been pretty sparse in the past few years. I actually got to know Aubrey because I invited her to my D&D group. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Funny how things work out, eh? Yeah. Nerds will be nerds. I mean, board games are also good, though. I... We, we do a lot of that, too. I don't know. D- D&D is just... It, it's, it's a tough thing to get going because you really need a good group that can schedule well. But it sucks because you actually have to, like, play with them to know how it'll go. Because, I don't know. Something about D&D, because of the role-playing aspect of it, it's so much more personal. So I feel like you really gotta... You gotta play it with people that you're gonna like. Right, because you know you're you're basically using your own personality to make your own character. You know, if you're playing with people that know your personality, it's just gonna click better. Easier to bounce off of for sure. It just I think it isn't necessarily like who all, who all is in the the group of players. It's more like just the DM and like if that fits the player styles. I well, suppose. yeah, for sure. Because I, I mean, me and you are much more on the role playing side than uh than the mechanic side for sure. But I mean, we went to school for acting, so yeah, acting. <laughs> acting. Oh At least that's goodness. what I keep telling myself. So you guys are like theater majors, then, right? Yeah, yeah. So how do you feel mm-hmm. about how? Because I'm sure you've heard like theater is like the butt of the joke for like a cliche of like quote unquote wasted major. That people will reference. Oh, I mean, see, it's okay because, yeah, that is the case. (laughs) Here's the way that I see it and the way that, like, people have told me. It's more so about the degree symbolizing that you, like, that you inside of a theater setting were actually able to commit to something for four years and make your way through it. You actually graduated college. You did something. You've done something. It is a minor, like, filler for experience. <laughs> it, it's, yeah. You can also get to know people that way. And, you know, it, it's, it's training yourself as well. I mean, I specifically feel that burn because I wanted to go into theater for, like, voice acting and voice work and voice, you know, all that stuff. Which is kind of why I'm doing this now. But right. We only had a program for theater, and that was really it. So I kind of just learned stuff while I was there. Ah, uh, fair enough. Honestly, I've learned more about what I want to do for a career at the radio station that I interned at the year after I graduated than I actually honestly did getting my degree. No, oh, no, no cool. nothing towards the university, it's just... There wasn't a class on how to work Adobe Audition, so there wasn't I mean, a class yeah, on recording like, myself. To be fair, I would say everything against the university, because you need to be preparing your students and well-rounding them, and the fact that you only focus on all these tiny things hurts you, especially in times like now when everyone's like, oh shit, now I need to do Zoom theater. <laughs> and you know how, many theater. Pe- you know how many people on the tech side of theater actually have the knowledge to do all this tech stuff online, hardly any of them because they've been working with light boards and sound boards in person, not stuff on computers. And it's like you also need to know how to do that. Especially limited at a time like this. Yeah. <laughs> like Rest in peace. Yeah. You know, I mean, I graduated and Aubrey's thriving. I mean, we're doing things, I guess. I don't know. Do you, do you feel satisfied with, with, with your schooling? I mean, I mean uh, 
Well, I'm such an idiot. Of course you're not talking to me. I mean, I'm asking you. <laughs> I can't believe I just answered that. <laughs> I know you're all no, going to put that part out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm putting it at the beginning. Uh, <laughs> Great. <laughs> I mean, yeah, there are parts of my schooling that I'm really satisfied with. Like, I have gotten on stage acting experience, and I have had teachers that I really enjoyed. But on the other hand, our department as a whole makes me feel that they do not prepare everyone in the best that they could. And they also just definitely focus on certain people over others. Oh, for and, sure. And I'm like, come on, like, we can wait till the real world to do that, or do you really <laughs> want to start doing that now? I don't know. The theater department was a very strange thing for me, because, I mean, I felt like I was engaged in it. I mean, I did a lot of stuff, but I, I was uh, performance-focused, and I did not act in a single play on stage. Uh, but hey, Damn. Hey, I they mean, didn't require it. Rip. W- no, yeah, I mean it's it's sort of an extracurricular thing that you everyone just sort of like goes after. You're either supposed to get in one or work one, for depending on what classes you have. <laughs> so they really aren't preparing you a whole lot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if they don't have these base requirements that seem kind of obvious. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, mm-hmm. I think the biggest issue is just that it's it's not big enough, and there's not enough people in it. I think that's where a lot of it comes from. But at the same time, there's a lot more they could be doing with what they have, so... Shrug. Yeah, I mean, more hands-on stuff. Yeah. I'm more so... Is university known for their theater program? Uh, around Arkansas and Texas, I guess, probably. They Uh, are one of the better, like, they are the best theater program in the state of Arkansas. They are up there when it comes to the Midwest, but they definitely don't compare to the likes of, like, Kansas City. Their theater program at UMKC is, like, way above and beyond, but they also get to work with the rep, and they also have a separated, segregated department where undergrads and graduate students don't necessarily work together. And while our university views that as a bad thing, that isn't always necessarily the worst thing because then we're not all competing for the same roles, which obviously, I mean, you know, like I I can compete with these other people, but it's going to make it a much larger pool, you know? Man, yeah. (laughs) I guess the spooky theme of this one was existential dread. Yeah. (laughs) Coming back at you again. (laughs) Psychological horror. This is the spookiest one of all. Yeah, this. Uh, actually, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna need really? to tag this one as a psychological horror. <laughs> <laughs> Trigger warning: mental anguish. Yeah. <laughs> but honestly, we've all been able to come to the agreement. I feel at this point we were kind of wronged by having the assumption made that we needed to all go to college whenever we grew up because that's what we needed to do because that was how you made money in the real world. Yeah. But, First um, you know, and I mean, part of that fallout is because too many people go to college now and there's no jobs. But um, I think another part of that is because it, it, like, it causes people to not think about the fact that there are a lot of other ways to, like, learn things other than just going to college, too. Because like yeah, I said, like <laughs> I um oh from the dude I most of the stuff I've learned for for editing the podcast has been from the internet. The internet's incredible, you know. Yeah. When you're looking up project search terms, <laughs> yeah, it's just like all right there. No, yeah, honestly, sometimes I wonder why people even necessarily go to school and get degrees in certain things when it's like, you can teach yourself all that shit from the internet. Well, I mean, I feel like our media kind of, like, portrays college as, like, a step in your life that you that you have to go through or else you're missing out, too. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, man. that's how the big business of college works. Business they can't keep putting us yeah. all in forever debt if we don't want to go. Hey, they you know what I mean? They chis- they chiseled my they sh- I think they chiseled my name into the sidewalk somewhere around campus. We should go find that at some point. Oh yeah, my mom's name is on there twice cuz she has a bachelor's a degree and a graduate degree from with the University. same name. <laughs> <laughs> and my uh grandma's somewhere on there too. Does she also yeah, have a twin? Yeah, that's literally No, she just oh. has the one. Okay. Cuz I think hers is just her graduate degree? I don't know. Uh, so yeah, 
Uh, I've just realized that we've been recording over an hour uh, somehow by accident. Uh, thanks for being here, guys. Uh, time flies, apparently. So, um, to close us out here, uh, how about we do one more spooky thing, which is capitalism. You guys want to have a uh, spicy deal? Uh, super spicy deal. A super spicy or, deal. Wait, since it's spooky season, is it spooky spicy deal? Uh, um, pumpkin spicy deal. It is now. <laughs> you know what? It is. It's a spooky spicy deal. A spooky spicy deal coming up. Aubrey's got the thing and I've got the money. Are you ready? Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. And yes, I am ready. Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. So the task you must complete together, this this is a task that must be done together, mm-hmm. you must together lick every square inch of Vin Diesel's body. A raccoon's weight in gold. Okay. Uh, I didn't even have to know the payment to know that the answer is <laughs> <Yeah>. yes. <laughs> the answer was the answer, yes. The answer is yes. Like Damn. I mean, Part of me thought head. that. I was like, you know what? I think they <laughs> would lick Vin Diesel up and down. It works Ooh. out because that's probably the best the best like money value that we've given so far, too. Good job. <laughs> Wait, Mr. Head is like Clean, a Vin Diesel has the most lickable head. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I think oh, Northern Lion's fold. doing pretty hot for himself right on the now. back of his head. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, uh, stick stick your tongue in between that. So anyway. Um, <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Uh, in the meantime, while we go to contact Vin Diesel, uh, would you guys like to plug your stuff before we get out of here? Uh, talk about the the stuff and things that you are up to and your in your lives that matter. Well, sure. Uh, so we are actually from we actually have our own podcast called Wiener Nova. We had a couple guests on here a couple weeks ago. Uh, yeah, we uh record every Friday. Our podcast is Wiener Nova on. Any uh, podcast platform. I was on the last one. Twitch. Yes, he was on the last one. <laughs> so if you like this podcast, go check it out. Uh, we stream on Twitch as well, uh, but that has no set schedule. At HMANWP, all one word. All of our socials are at YTHMANWP for pretty much every platform. Our TikTok is at HMANWP. Please boost our views. And our YouTube channel is HMANWP. Uh, you're probably sensing a theme here, so it should be pretty easy. That's, We'd appreciate uh, the clout. <laughs> the clout. Wouldn't we all? Well, all right. Tell yeah. that little bitch stop clout chasing. Tell <laughs> that little bitch that I'm not basic. Okay. 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 So anyway, back to grease magic.